You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cricket Podcast with me, Max Rowe Brown, and I'm joined today by uh, a very busy, a sad, busy man who's <laughs> not been able to join us for a couple of weeks, but um, he doesn't have a choice today because Jack's in Italy, in Ancona, having a lovely old time, hopefully substantially warmer and drier than it is outside because, yeah, it's still the English cricket summer and it's absolutely pissing it down. But mm-hmm. welcome back, Ross. Nice to see you. Yeah, lovely to be back, Max. Yeah, it's been um, yeah a pretty busy few weeks. So uh, yeah, I'm getting married, which is very exciting, Max. After uh, just copying you, really, you got married yeah. earlier this year. I thought, well, I better do the same. So um, the prep Always for that is well under me. Uh, and I've been trying to play a bit of cricket, but I am rubbish at cricket now. Um, I've got to accept that uh, the inner turmoil has subsided. I've gone through the different stages of grief. Um, I'm now at acceptance, which I think is very, very important. And um, yeah, it's amazing what happens when you don't have time to train and you yeah just pretty much go off a cliff. So um, that's where I'm at, Max. Um, but I have been following the cricket. I've been watching as much as I possibly could do the test matches. Um, I've been following Pakistan's kind of every now and again explosion. Um, obviously, they lost to Bangladesh. Um, they're all over the place because their stadiums are not going to be ready for the England um, test tour. And yeah, in general, it's been quite fun and amusing. Um, so I think, Max, we crack straight into it and we talk about the last test match between England and Sri Lanka. Yes, absolutely. Last time uh, last time we did a show was at the end of day one because that's obviously good timing. That's, that's how you plan podcasts, isn't it? You just do one halfway through a test match and then forget about it. Um, so we've got all that to wrap up and we'll look ahead to the uh, the third and final test at the Oval, which starts tomorrow as we're recording because we've managed to get one in actually before the test starts this time. Well done us. And uh, yeah, like you say, plenty of other cricketing business to uh, to attend to. Pakistan doing their usual Pakistan disarray nonsense. And uh, there's been a few a few bits of news that have uh, have come out in the last few uh, last few days, aren't there? So. We've got the opportunity, Ross, for our favourite, our favourite segment, cricket news, cricket, cricket news. news. Yes. Um, so that's that's all good. Uh, yeah, let's crack straight on, shall we? The uh, the second test. I mean, I haven't heard your thoughts on the England Sri Lanka series so far. Uh, Jack and I expected, well, a bit of a, a bit of a thumping really at the start, and it, it looked a bit like that was going to be the case of a few overs into the first test, but you know. Sri Lanka have acquitted themselves quite well, and they've put up a bit of a, a bit of a fight. How, how have you, what have you made of uh, made of it all? I found it a little bit more interesting to watch than the West Indies series, which I think was a kind of. I think that's a good barometer. I think we've got a really even comparison. I kind of thought there, um, mm. the fight from Sri Lanka is. Yeah, I think admirable. Um, there has been at times where it was almost head in the hands, guys, what are you doing? Um, but there has also been some good passages of play where they've really kind of knuckled down and, I don't know, maybe not scared England that much. Like in, in the last Test match, there was some partnerships building, but there was such a large total that it was never going to be kind of in doubt, really. And that, that flexibility that it's given, Ollie Pope is going to stand in captain um well the flexibility to not score any runs well there's one and the flexibility to set some pretty interesting fields right there's been a lot of um traps on kind of leg slip leg gully you know working around the corner fly slip etc and i've quite enjoyed actually seeing what that's all about and whether that's just ollie pope doing it versus whether that's kind of the team doing it remains to be seen right but it is what it is um but sri lanka have posed a threat they've bowled england out number of times um so they've definitely got um the lineup it's a shame that we didn't see lemon land come and play in england old (laughs) embaldenia um but jaya saria has kind of proved a um yeah a capable spinner um what i would like to know is can their top order actually hit some proper runs like karuna ratna at the top is well, he was part of the World Test Championship and like best eleven, wasn't he, for a kind of a pretty a much a couple of years. Yeah. Um, but he's not been ably supported, I would say, at the top of the order. Um, and it's been very much the engine room, kind of Chandamal, Matthews, um, Kamadu Mendes, um, De Silva as well. 
I, you shouldn't be relying on your number seven all the time to bail you out. It's a bit like 2019 England, isn't it? You just expect them to be 30 for three and then hope that they can dig themselves out of a hole. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there, there was there was some chat today about whether Kamindu Mendes gets moved up the order because he's averaging basically 80 in his yeah. first like, nine games in Test cricket. So, and uh, if someone's going to know is... whether whether to battle the order, it's going to be Ian Bell, right? Who obviously is their batting coach for this. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would be a very England thing to do, wouldn't it? To get someone who's just come into the test side, playing really well at number seven, averaging 80, made a great start. Well, he looks like he could bat number three, Ross, because we've needed a number three for 15 years. So go on in. You go, oh, no, he's crap. We'll have to we'll have to drop him. He can't do it. That would that would fit. That would fit yeah, what England are fit. all about. So maybe Ian Bell. Um, and he Ian Bell was around at that time, right? He was he was all he was um a uh, sufferer of England's <laughs> approach at, at that time. So maybe maybe it will have rubbed off on him. Maybe we'll see it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean I I agree, right? The, there's there's clearly some some good players in that middle order, that batting line, like Chandamal um and, and Mendes have both had good innings, Dan and Jaya as well as captain. So yeah, it's not it's not doom and gloom, is it, for Sri Lanka? They've acquitted themselves well. Yeah, they've also come up against one of the greatest batsmen of all time, right? Mm. Joe Root. Joe, Joe Root, when he's in these purple patches, is just unbelievable. And it's almost just like you don't even know where to bowl at him. And they don't quite have that express pace that you kind of need to hurry Joe Root or the skill of a Pat Cummins in, in that space and really, really targeting, obviously, that off, what, back-to-back -back centuries. He's looked... I'll use the term mint, Max. He's, he's, mm. he's looked absolutely mint. Um, as good and, as ever. Yeah, and it's just one of those pieces where Sachin, we, I think we joked a couple of months ago, um, with Sachin's record right in Test Match Cricket, and will, will Joe Root get to that level? Um, genuinely, when you, when you watch him play like this, and there's, there's, there's plenty of Test Matches still in the locker for him, there's a, there is a lot to be said that that could well happen, right? And some of our India listeners will be sitting there going, you know, I'm never getting near Sachin, I'm never getting near Sachin. I'm, I don't think he's going to get too far away. If he does get there, I'm, I'm sure some people are preparing their uh, caveats and asterisks <laughs> um, for, <laughs> for the eventuality. But yeah, they kind of have been Joe-rooted a bit, Sri Lanka, right? This game... Yeah, they put England into bat and everyone thought they were insane. But actually, they made a really good start, got a few wickets. And if it wasn't for Joe Root's 143, obviously, Gus Atkinson scored 118. And we should <laughs> mention that because... We will, we'll get, we'll definitely him. get to Gus. We'll definitely get yeah. to Gus. Um, but, you know, with, without Joe Root scoring that 143, it's very unlikely that Gus Atkinson goes and scores that 118. And England could have been in a bit of a bind. And... Same with the, the second innings, right? I mean, England had a massive lead, and it was obviously a case of score as many runs as you possibly can. But um, who scored the runs? Oh, it was Joe Root. Did anyone else score any runs? No, they didn't. <laughs> and in the first first game, England had a bit of a tricky chase on, and there were a few wickets falling, and there were a few jitters, and Joe Root was the man who um, did the business. So you think, yeah, I mean, actually, although it's been two comfortable wins for England, maybe... It's not been as far away as it kind of looked. So it's just, it just couldn't. They just couldn't take advantage of that pressure, right? In that yeah. first innings, like Gus Atkinson coming in, like don't don't take anything away from Gus Atkinson. Like really good cricketer, is he someone who should be hitting a century on the second time he's playing at Lords? Probably not in Test match cricket, right? But he looked absolutely brilliant. He looked completely mm. assured of the. I think Sri Lanka kind of thought they were they, they did what England do so often or they did an awful lot under Joe Root's captaincy they just assumed they were going to get the last kind of three or four wickets quite cheaply yeah and they took the foot off the bat uh, to, the, to the foot of the pedal got a little bit complacent and by the time you realize especially against this England team 40 runs have been hit mm. and that's uh, and when you've hit 40 runs you're you're set at the crease and I don't think I don't think there's been loads in the pitches either. There was obviously in the, in the previous test match, a little bit of turn, bit of variable bounce. This pitch I thought was actually okay um, for the teams. There was still enough in the bat for the batters and the bowlers, but to let England off the hook at those important moments is, is, is the real difference between those sides. And you just can't let, you just can't let someone like Joe Root just bat against you. You have to try to figure out how to do it and tr try and limit him. It is just very, very difficult. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes. And, you know, 
they they've got a, a decent, I suppose, skillful bowling bowling lineup. I quite like it. Asith Fernando, what he tries to do with the ball, and the hero Kamara came in bowled a bit of with a bit of extra pace. But you know, like you said, they don't have the weapons naturally mm. to to trouble someone like Joe Root really, um, because you have to be top tier. Um, to get to he's, too good against, he's too good against spin, right? He's too good. And in some in some cases, you look against this England team. Some of them aren't brilliant against spin bowling. Joe Root is elite against spin bowling, mm. and and I think if we're being honest, and even our Sri Lankan listeners will sit there and say, "Are these really the best spinners that Sri Lanka can put out?" And you'll be like, compared to obviously not even Muralitharan, right? But you, Harath used to absolutely mm. spin a web. These guys aren't even fit to tie the laces of Harath, so it's a little bit. And yeah, difficult, and it's in England. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, to, and yeah, you've got Anderson. that to contend with as well. That is yeah. true. Um, Max, should we come was, to Gus Atkinson? Uh, well, I was going to say for, for Gus, like it was a brilliant, brilliant innings. Like to hit a century at pretty much a runner ball is astounding, right? In in that space, and, and to do it from what number eight, um, mm. like fair play. Um, but I think. What I was really impressed with, not only was his shot selection and how clean he was hitting the ball, etc. Anyone can have that day. Like any dog can have its day, right, on, on that front. But Gus Atkinson ends up with his name on the leaderboard, um, both for his, his tenfer in the first, um, in his debut against West Indies, takes wickets here, hits a century here. Um, but it was the batting with everybody else that I was actually really impressed with. Like actually being able to build innings and kind of get to those different parts where you've got the likes of Matt Potts, Ollie Stone, and those guys kind of around you. Um, it's really, really important to be able to um, like, take advantage of that. How many times have we seen like just tails completely capitulate loads, but here there was much better game management. And I loved game management. I haven't said it in a long time, but there was much better game management from the tail and how England were going about things than we'd seen probably of Basball 1.0. Mm. Yeah, that's probably fair. Uh, I think the, the question we really need to answer, Ross, is, is is Gus Atkinson the greatest ever cricketer to play for England? Possibly play for anyone. Mm. Well, he does have a pretty good haircut. Like, is You know when um, the Algeria team um, at the... Well, when was it? it was, I think it was the South Africa World Cup all went to the same hairdresser. I was mm. kind of hoping that England would do the same, but so many people haven't gone down the light bulb North route Korea yet. vibes. <laughs> yeah, not quite there yet. But <laughs> yeah, he's looked great. He's bowling quick. Um, it's great that he's going to play in the next, text ma- uh, next, the next test match as well. Um, yeah. I'll be there on Saturday, so um, looking forward to going to that. Um, but if you think at the start of the summer when we had Jimmy Anderson in the lineup. And people just like, oh, what's going to happen? Gus Atkinson has kind of made people forget a little bit of how scary that is. But this England bowling lineup, it's, it doesn't. It's probably not going to scare Australia at this point. But what England are doing, they're trying to give people the experience to get to that position of going. Yeah, we know we cra- know know our craft. Yes, we can do this. But if you t- if you were to say two years ago, our bowling lineup was going to be Wokes, Atkinson, Potts, and Ollie Stone. You'd be like, oh, re- are we really going to put that out as, a, as our four seamers, right? With a 20-year-old Bashir, <laughs> not a chance. But it's doing enough against um, Sri Lanka at the moment. And Gus Atkinson is a real real handful for them. Yeah, absolutely. And like, obviously the the charge is always going to be leveled, isn't it? Like, all right, yeah, look, he's, what a great start. Fair enough. But it is only the West Indies and it is only Sri Lanka. But Gus Atkinson is the one who's taken those wickets. He's bowling in this in this you know bowling unit with Chris Wokes, who's taken bags of wickets in England, and you know a bunch of other talented bowlers. And it's Gus Atkinson who's taking the wickets. So yeah, you have to give him the credit there. And it's it's interesting watching him because he's it's it's some it's a bit different, isn't it? A definitely different in terms of an England bowler and how he opens the the bowling. You know, it's not trying to swing the ball. It's like practically bowling scrambled seam or or like you know. Uh, cross seam as an opening bowler. It's a bit awkward when he comes. He doesn't have like a flowing. He doesn't have a flowing action. It would be my read when I watch it. It feels a bit all rigid and together, but it mm. works. Yeah, almost robotic in a way. Mm. But yeah, there's obviously something about it that's very awkward to to face. You know the the way. The way well, ninety miles an hour react off the pitch. Yeah, <laughs> you know the way it reacts off the pitch at ninety miles an hour, high aces. Yeah, it's it's exciting, and mm. I'm looking forward to seeing it tested. Um, overseas and against some 
um, some top class talent. So we'll well we'll get that. Obviously, we've got India coming up in next summer and in the Ashes. So exciting opportunities mm-hmm. for Gus Atkinson to to take the next step. But yeah, good good signs for England, I think, and um, not 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 a disaster for Sri Lanka either. But uh, no, they've been worthy opponents, um, even if Lords decided to price everybody out of going to see the fourth test match, uh, fourth day of the test match, because they're well, robbing bastards. Mm. Um, burn but, it down, you know, burn it yeah, down. Neither here nor there. Um, Max, should we move on to previewing the next game because there is a change in the there is. Lineup. Yes, Matthew Potts is news. out, um, and I, I've liked Matt Potts's hair. I've, I've got time for Matt Potts's little um, little mullet that he's got going on. Um, mm. But ten foot tall Josh Hull is coming into the lineup. Um, yeah. England's next iteration of attributes over averages. Um, Max, what do you think is going to happen? Um, because he took some wickets against Sri Lanka um, when they played for England Lions or the England A team or County representative, whatever the wherever yeah. the warm-up game was, right? Um, but his average is like 185 in the county championship. <laughs> it's not crazy. Well, I think it is, is it about 80, his um, <laughs> his average. I'll see if I can bring it up. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's not your classic um, record that gets you breaking into the England Test team. But uh, we we know now, don't we, that that's not what England are about. It's not what they're interested in. They're um, they've got their uh, their methods for actually you know what it's uh it's only 62.75 oh there we go i like that it's, he's played he's played 10 first class matches um so yeah like you said it is it's it's attributes over over averages you know we thought we thought shabashir and the whole um high release point stuff was just a bit of a bit of a joke and, and I mean, very it's, silly it's and still, very england memey still kind of is it kind of is but he He's done quite well, hasn't he? Let, let's face it. Like, has Shelbyshire done better than you expected in this England tide? Uh, yes. Has he done better than I th- think Jack Leach would have done? No. I think that Jack wasn't Leach the question have... I asked. No, was it's it true. I no, said, true. Has he done better than you thought? So... I'll tell you what was, uh, was, was not welcomed in the last Test match. I forgot to mention this. Why did Dan Lawrence not bowl more? I was disappointed with that. Clearly, he's a bit of a joke opener. We've, we, there's a bit of a failed experiment at this point in time. He's got yeah. one test match to secure his place going to Pakistan or wherever that series would be there. But I would have loved to see him bowl more because, yeah, Bashir, I think, as you say, Bashir did an okay job. Um, but Dan Lawrence is a, it's weird to watch, and I like weird. Yeah, I think, actually, England should bowl only off spin at the Oval. Get Josh Hull into the team. And then refuse to bowl him and only bowl Joe Root, Dan Lawrence, and Shabashir. That's the that's the well, route to, they well, go to, be, down. to be fair. Maybe that's what they're going with. Maybe the Josh Hull is left arm, isn't he? So left arm over, create a bit of rough outside the yeah. right handers um, off stump, and actually that's where they that's where they come into their own. Well, I mean that might be a thing. Might genuinely be a plan that England come with. Just pick any left armer um, mm. to bowl right arm, uh, left arm <laughs> over. Um, there aren't any other options. The right no, side bottom technically never retired, so you know could be. Right. Thing. Yeah, the, that was the that was the stat they um, they they came up with during the, the second test, wasn't it? No left arm seamer has taken more than hundred wickets uh, for England in tests, which is is quite interesting. So, I mean, I like having a left armer in the side, right? It's that different angle. It makes it trickier for right handers because it just gives them that other that different angle that you don't you know you don't normally face and it it's you can you know it attacks both edges and bring something different into play but for me the josh hole thing just it it reminds me it's chris tremlett 2.0 it's left-handed chris tremlett it's it feels too obvious that that's like the the blueprint you know i mean it, and it was it a successful one right it worked so so why not because whatever we've been doing in the last 10 years certainly hasn't worked mm. in australia so yeah get someone really tall in and see if he can trim it i'm i'm on board i've i've come around i'm it's stockholm syndrome ross i'm like no, I'm, i don't think it is i don't, think, it, I don't think it's camp. stockholm syndrome i don't think it's stockholm syndrome. I, I think it is that part of going but i can i can start to see what they're trying to do. and i think that's important and i think that could i think it could work it could well be the worst idea <laughs> that the, the 
at the same time is if we keep doing the same thing, we're not going we're not gonna get <laughs> the wins that they desire down under. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's fair enough. And it's like, yeah, life is even thinking of things a different way, because you know, going going around the same circus, the same area ground hasn't hasn't really done the job. So give him a go. Yeah, he, he performed well in that England Lions game. And it's yeah, if they think there's something there, why not why not give it a go? It's uh I can't in all honesty think of how who's next off the rank, I suppose. I mean People talk about Sam Cook a lot, don't they? And he's been quite unlucky not to get a go. But we're already down to like England's ninth choice seamer, aren't we? With all the injuries, so it's uh, yeah, but it, it just, is what it is got, at this point. Yeah, and you have got Jofra, who's obviously bowled well in the hundred and has played played well for Sussex, etc. Ollie Robinson feels like he's probably out of the picture um, for the short term, at least. But we've still got some talent there, so it'll be interesting to see where we end up going with Max. But um, what, I, what we do need to talk about, Max, is our sponsors. Yes. Well, why don't we take a quick break and come back, and uh, and then it will be time for some new ad copy because we love that. It will be. It will be. All right. We'll be back in a mo. You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Right, welcome, welcome back. back, everybody. Are you uh, are you going to bust oh. out, Ross? Oh, I'm going to bust, bust out. I'm going to bust out. Max, do you want grooming routines to be a one and done deal? Well, now the days of using the same trimmer for your face and your private parts are over, thanks to our friends at Manscaped. Um, they've come up with the ultimate package to keep your hairs trimmed from twelve to six. Introducing the Beard and Balls Bundle, featuring the Lawnmower 5.0 and the Beard Hedger. A trimmer for the moneymaker and another for the boys downstairs. Uh, you'll get 20% off and free shipping with the code, Max? Cricket Pod. Oh, um, at manscaped.com. And that's 20% off, free shipping with the code, Cricket Pod. Um, at manscaped.com. The premium grooming experience. Um, trust manscapes um max when it comes to shaving your balls where 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 do you do it is it the, is it a garden job <laughs> um well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna liken the um the requirements of of shaving my balls to actually trimming a hedge it's not quite that thick um no nice uh you know to keep it nice and nice and tidy in the in the bathroom, we don't need to go into too much detail about the the routine, Ross. I think um, no, as long as you're wearing gloves, might, if you're doing it outside, right? you don't, you, you, yeah, you don't yeah. Want to, you don't want to nick yourself, do you? Um, that would be well. That's the beauty of Manscape, Ross. Uh, you know, mm. reduced risk of of nicks and scrapes with the uh, the ceramic blade of the lawnmower 5.0. It's a good piece of kit. Got the lawnmower, got the beard hedger. Use them both. Uh, five star review from me. Excellent. Um, Anywhere Max. in the house. <laughs> Uh, Max, we've spoken about England, um, but what do you reckon in terms of predictions for the final test match? Um, there is a bit of rain around. There's been thunderstorms in England. Yeah, um, rain is scheduled know. over the course of the next five days. Um, helpfully, they've actually scheduled a test match on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, instead of starting a test match on Wednesday and it pretty much being over by the weekend. Mm. Um, so where, where, are you, where are you sitting? I'm, if I'm perfectly honest, Max. I reckon Sri Lanka are going to uh, going to cause a bit of an upset here, and they. Um, Do you? I think I think they're only going to lose by a hundred runs. <laughs> well, they're trending in the right direction, aren't they? From that point of view, um, I think with the rain around, I suppose that that makes uh, makes things a bit more interesting. But I, I don't think it doesn't look like there's going to be enough to to really. I mean, you'd, you'd probably need what a day, a whole. You'd need to lose a whole day. Probably a bit more, I think, mm -hmm. to be confident that the the rain's going to get in the way of a result. So I, I I think I think England will be fine. I think they'll um they'll do the job and run out reasonably comfortable winners mm -hmm. again. I can't. I've not seen anything to change my mind on that that front. I just don't think I don't think Sri Lanka have got the even you know when they've made inroads to that England batting line. I don't think they've got the sticking power to um 
to take it on, especially if it's not going to turn too much. If it's you know it's a bit wet, then you're not going to get much in the way of a reverse, and the, you know it's not going to get too dry. So I don't know if spin comes into it the oval a lot, but I think I think England should be fairly comfortable. I know that's a very uh, bold prediction to make, but. Well, I'll tell you whose stock has risen in this test series has been Zach Crawley's um, because yeah, Dan Lawrence has not been able to capitalise. Yeah. Always look um, better when you're not in the side, that's what they say. You do, in, do indeed. And Ollie Pope, Max, you're a massive Surrey fan. Um, yeah. Ollie Pope is yeah, uh, flattered to deceive. Um, mm. So where do you think he's, he's going to be his home ground? I think he, I think he does. He averages about a million about at the Oval. Yeah, about 80 um, yeah. at the Oval. For Surrey, um, and probably for England as well. First, probably for just first class cricket in general. Um, so, where do you think is he? Gonna, is this going to be a boy returns home, hit century, and everyone, everyone cheers? Yeah, I, I, I'm backing Ollie Pope to, to score some runs. I actually, I did want to um, come to Ollie Pope because I don't know if you saw Michael Vaughan last week what he was saying about I don't not liking Ollie Pope as a captain because he's too um, insecure. Yeah, it's quite a bold thing to say, isn't it, when um, that's coming from someone who's clearly insecure in themselves as well. Mm. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I saw it, it. It made me angry at the time because I was just like, well, the whole premise of, of that argument seems to be based on Lee Pope being a bit, you know, jittery at the crease. But mm. I mean, that's that's kind of the way he bats. Is anyone turning around to Steve Smith and being like, "Sorry, you're a bit too insecure to be uh, be captain off"? Of Australia, um, you can say he's too much of a cheat to be captain of Australia. That's a different story. <laughs> but um, you can't be going around saying, "Well, look, Steve Smith moves around a bit too much to the crease. He's clearly not up to the job." Um, so, I, I, yeah, I thought, apart from the fact that it was total, total bollocks in the first place, what he was saying, um, I, I don't know if he knows Ollie Pope that well to mm. cast aspersions about his mental state and fitness for the, the role of captaincy. But I was thinking about it more today as well, like with the fact that we obviously we were doing a podcast and wanted to talk about it. And I got even angrier because, um, you know, we can't be having people going around and maybe this isn't the, you know, the route that Michael Vaughan was going down, but it doesn't matter because you have to think about what you're saying in the context of what's going on at the time. And it wasn't very long ago, Ross, that we were all um, laying out eulogies and tributes to Graham Thorpe, England, one of England's greatest ever batters who very mm -hmm. sadly took his own life because he had serious mental health issues so then to have a former england captain coming around going well he's too insecure to be england captain you know making comments that clearly could be taken to relate to mental health i think it's absolutely disgusting actually like at, at the time i just thought you're an idiot and it's you know you, what you're talking about is nonsense you can't like try and read into someone's ability to be captain because they're a bit you know scratchy at the crease to start with um and then i thought you know well maybe he knows him and he thinks that the you know ollie pope's personality Wait, what what what, yeah, what, what, what will help him also be to the media yeah, what, yeah. What, what, I, I know him really well and actually what's really going to help him is by just releasing this <laughs> calling him out for being uh, talk yeah, sport yeah, yeah yeah that he's there um or he doesn't know him and he's you know just reading into things, God, he? which is Rent also awful <laughs> Um, yeah. So, like, the, the, you can cut it any way you like, um, but as far as I'm concerned, what Michael Vaughan said is, um, yeah, really just quite despicable, and um, he needs to be called out on it because uh, it's it's a joke, and it's nice to see the England camp because you know the whole point of this England um, setup is that they're backing people and trying to create siege a mentality. Yeah, well, just just to put just you know nice environment to play cricket in and positivity and. Didn't take long for them to kind of, you know, rally around and be like, well, what a load of bollocks. And Ollie Pope, to his credit, came out and was like, what are you on about? So, you know. <laughs> well, I think there's sort of, if, if Michael Vaughan would have turned around and be like, it's the weight of runs. People could be like, do you know what? Yeah, has he hit as many runs as he possibly could have done? Probably not. He's thrown away some good opportunities, blah, blah, blah. But the second you start going, yeah, just, as you say, making assertions like that, you've kind of lost the, the argument anyway. Um, and it's not surprising, is he, that somebody like Michael Vaughan does this? Like, yes, he, he, he won an Ashes series. Fantastic news. Um, but it doesn't give you the right to then be a complete bell end for the rest of your life, does it? So, no. Um, anyway, um, Max, well said, I thought, um, on that front. Um, 
in terms of um, the next test match, yeah, we think England are going to win. Ollie's going to hit some runs um, and we hope Josh Hull does well. Um, and no doubt there will, uh, it'll be quite a fun prospect to watch. But of what? Perhaps the two tallest bowlers in Bashir and uh, Bahal go at either end. So that'd be quite interesting to see. Um, yeah, we need a seven footer next. That's what we do. We need, that's what yeah. we need. If, if, yeah. My um, maybe, problem is, maybe. might take LBW out of the equation. Yeah, quite, quite possibly. Can't get too quite tall. Possibly. Um, well, we, and yeah, with uh, Ben Duckett, maybe they'll go for a really small bowler. It's worked kind of opening up, right? Tall batsman, small batsman. Maybe they need mm. now a small bowler, tall bowler. Yeah. Who knows? Um, Max, we switch our attention to the circus that is Pakistan cricket. Yes, we 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 can. I was I was for I was wondering. There was one more bit of England news, wasn't there? Um, oh, we, probably, we don't need to go oh, into it too no, much. No, we, you're, you are we've right. Got you a are right. Ball, we've got a white ball series coming up, so we can probably dive into it a bit more there. But the news has just come out that we're going back to single coach, white ball, red ball, and Baz is going to. Going to take the take the torch for the England White Bull team. What are your immediate thoughts, Ross? Uh, I don't really care. If I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> like, um, I think when it came to, you I have think to like, care. It's yeah. your hobby. <laughs> I think uh, Ma- Matthew Mott. Um, we we always knew was going to be a bit of a lame duck right after the uh, after the yeah debacle or the debacles. Uh, and yeah, if you if you can't find. A better candidate in that space, then you kind of look a little bit closer to home. And I think the the setup that they're trying to instill um, is one where their assistant coaches can step up and do what they want, right? Um, so for, obviously Freddie Flintoff is in the mix and those parts. Said he hasn't gelled very well with um, Joss Butler, whatever that truly means. Um, Marcus Trasothi is going to be the kind of interim kind of coach up until the the new year, and um, he's also said that. Yeah, he will be taking a break from different series where the assistant coaches will take the reins because he wants to spend time with family, etc. Right? There's a there's an awful lot of cricket to be played, Champions Trophies, World Cups, Ashes tours. So there has to be the right balance, and yeah, maybe that the the split. Um, which, yeah, no doubt we said on the podcast and no doubt everybody's now saying, oh, this is a brilliant idea. Um, going back to one person, it feels just kind of cyclical, right? Um, my personal preference is that you have kind of they're, they're, they're quite different games um and i'm when you're when you're coming to manage a, an international team do you need the the coaching skill set or is it just the vibes skill set and obviously i'm not saying that brendan mcconnell doesn't have the coaching skill set at all but it's very much focused on creating the environment to go out and be brilliant in it felt like england's white ball team need some of that yeah. It, they, they don't need they but before it was you know pretty candidate can it can you kind of get in you've done really well with the australian women team we've got a champion team here you can keep them going and the, the, the renewal cycle was really poorly thought through the decision making was really poor and it kind of had a big question on was actually making the decisions in that team i think with mccullum in charge it becomes a little bit easier to be like right Set up. This is what we're doing. So, um, yeah. I, overall, I think it's a fine decision, um, and it's, yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I broadly agree. Really, like I'm, I'm, I agree with you in the sense that I'm still of a mind that the red ball and white ball roles should probably be separate. But I don't mind having a kind of, I don't know, an overlord <laughs> that. <laughs> Controls, like you say, controls. That's Rob Key. Rob, Rob, Key, Rob, Rob yeah. Key's the overlord. Well, he's a bit, yeah, a bit too, bit too back officey for my liking. <laughs> I think you know, you've got the, it's like uh, the the regional the regional manager, the assistant to the regional manager. That's that's what <laughs> that's what we need in charge of the England England setup. Um, yeah, I, the vibes thing. Well, I say I'm, people say vibes too much. It's annoying. It's not Love Island. Um, it's uh, the the atmosphere that you're trying to create around that England side. Something that's been very successful in the Test side. You can clearly see that the white ball side uh, are under it a bit. A lot of pressure. I think they're talking about Josh Butler not looking like he's enjoying it very much, and Baron Baz trying to bring some of the um, the joy back to it. So, I, yeah, I think it's a good a good move from that point of view, but. Yeah, I don't know how much it will be in terms of like the hands-on. So I think, yeah, maybe borrowing a bit of the experience of the Red Bull side to try and get people back happy yeah, and enjoying their cricket. Money. 
Yeah, maybe they're yeah. saving a bit of money. Well, There's maybe. no way that McCullum's going to get two salaries, right, for that. They'll just be like, yeah, right. you can have a slight increase over here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think you know, there's the I think the value is in someone who understands white ball cricket and the players they've got and the way they want to play and the way that you're going to put set your team out to win games of T20 cricket or one day cricket because that's I think where there can be a point of difference with the with the coaching. No reason um, England's coaching staff can't do that, but yeah, it definitely feels like a writing the ship thing mm. almost you know like a white ball reset i suppose like, i don't think it's going as badly as the rebel stuff was but i think there's parallels in terms yeah, of like, the, the way things so. are going so yeah. i think there's, there's there's far more variance isn't there in the in the white ball game like to, if you were going oh you're going to be judged if you win the t20 world cup i think it's quite a difficult thing to be just like yeah that's why there's yeah. just so much variance the 50 over world cup i think is slightly different i think the 50 over world cup is yeah something that you can kind of work through. The, champ- the Champions Trophy obviously changes what it is, but yeah, I think that is an interesting thing. I think McCullum would do a fine job. I think England need to get their selection right. Um, well, obviously, big. Um, we've worked with Dan Weston on the on the podcast plenty, and uh, it's yeah some of the selections in the white ball team over the last two years have been really quite bad, um, and they haven't had proper succession planning. And they've yeah not managed the decline of some of the players as well as they possibly could have done, and so McCullum kind of gets yeah a bit of a free reign to kind of say right we're going to chop and change and do what we want here. So I think it's yeah probably a good time for it to happen yeah. rather than it was you happening might, two years ago. You might just pick the Harlem Globetrotters, just pick the tallest ODI side in history. <laughs> I, uh, it's gonna it's just gonna end up with zach crawley and ben duckett opening in all formats of the game so um yeah uh, i mean anyway. uh, to be fair as an odi partnership that'd be pretty it wouldn't be bad would it let's yeah, face it um but yeah well that's enough of vaguely sensible decision making around cricket it's time to move on to complete nonsense deal, and, deal uh, pakistan deal, deal pakistan indeed uh wh- where do you want to start ross there's so much uh, so much fun well well what, what, the what yeah, they, they start with the actual cricket. So um, Bangladesh were down and out. They were 26 for six or something absolutely ridiculous. And then Lytton Das hit a blistering century um, and managed to, well, maybe not blistering, but yeah, hit a very good century. Um, and yeah, they managed to lose to Bangladesh, um, which, look, Bangladesh are a good team if you're an associate nation. Um, when you are Pakistan, India, Australia, New Zealand, you should be getting a vote. But Bangladesh have been able to win at home, right? They've been able to put things together where they can do things. They've had one or two results away from home. They beat New Zealand. Um, they obviously had Shakib Alassane get um, accused of murder in some of the recent riots, which are obviously terrible. Um, and they've managed to bottle up whatever angst and anger has come from there and, yeah, turn over Pakistan on their, on their home turf. It's, it's, a, it's a mega victory for Bangladesh. Um, but Pakistan aren't very good now. Like, well, what, like, what are they doing, Max? I don't know what they're doing. No, I mean, you, you look at that. You look at that side, don't you? And you, you, you're just sort of wondering where it all went wrong. Um, it's, not, it's not a high-quality cricket side. Babarazm hasn't scored a run in five years. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I mean, they've dropped they've dropped Shaheen Afridi because he's not doing the business, and it's, yeah, it's all it's all falling apart. And I I guess Pakistan are as lost as anyone about where to turn because uh, apparently the next thing on their list is to use in inverted commas use AI to um, to select. Uh, well, well they said they said this. Players. They said this, but they've also appointed five different team mentors for it. So you're a bit just like, like, like what? What are you doing? Like, the, what screams to me of this Pakistan team is like, it's like nepotism. It's like when you play like amateur cricket and you literally just got like the the coach's sons play for, for all the good teams. Kind of feels yeah. like you've got that. Oh, no, a couple of my cousins they they can come in and play. They're pretty good. Compared to these, this guy's hitting loads of runs over here. This person is hitting loads of runs. Here. Oh, this guy's really good at taking wickets. Should we hit him in? Um, no, he's, he's not. He's not a leg. So actually, we're not going to pick him. <laughs> like, it just feels weird. Um, and I always want Pakistan to do well. There is a charm about Pakistan, especially the cricket team, which I, I can't help but want to do well. 
but they always shoot themselves in the foot. Um, and it's just so disappointing. Yeah, they're shooting do. themselves in the face at the moment. Yeah, it's not it's not ideal. Um, and yeah, look, losing losing to Bangladesh at home for in a test series in a two game test series is is bitterly disappointing. But fair play to Bangladesh. Like I think yeah. I think over over time, I've given Bangladesh a bit of a hard time around what what are they actually trying to achieve, etc. Um, and yeah, they've come out doing pretty well here. Um, Max, in terms of the other bits of Pakistan, the the AI selection they don't they don't help themselves with announcements like that, do they? No, they don't. But I mean, I there's, there's a part of me that feels like you know, do do we really know what that means? Like we're we're <laughs> in this world now with ChatGPT, where as soon as anything involves a computer, someone says AI, you know, ah, they they're using you know, they might be just doing some stats and using an uh, using an algorithm. But um, no, no, they're just they're just using AI and uh, and basically absolving themselves of all responsibility. But uh, maybe maybe it's maybe it's a good thing. Maybe there's a wealth of data they can use and um, use some sort of clever model to try and find out who might be the best in certain areas, who might have the the best attributes, the the best records in certain bits of cricket that will help them. I mean, it's doing something different. I don't, I don't mind them doing something different. It's just, yeah, like, like you say, when you just come out and make a splash, like we're going to use AI to solve just, all our problems. Just keep your mouth shut. You sound just, just, just keep your yeah. mouth shut. I, that, that's what I just don't get. When you do, if you're going to do something new, and you just like, don't make a big song and dance about it. <laughs> Open yeah. up to be criticised, right? Just, just go back to the bit where you're telling us about who you've sacked. And he was replacing them. <laughs> exactly. Um, they also came out and said that their pitch for Raul Pindi was the wrong pitch. They were very surprised. <laughs> at that. You, you, yeah, uh, we, what, what was the quote? Uh, um, we didn't make a mistake reading the pitch. It just didn't play like we thought it would. That was as a Mahmood. Uh, coming yeah, in it's that, just, that's that got like the, the principal Skinner meme. All over, yeah, isn't it? yeah. It's just, for, it's just again, just, just keep your mouth shut, mate. It's just such a silly thing to say. Um, and then the other part is that their construction work on the stadiums is unlikely to be completed. So with less, I think it's just about a month to go um, mm. for England's Test tour. Uh, they are now looking whether they can go and play in the UAE um, or Sri Lanka. So England playing against Pakistan in Sri Lanka, I wouldn't mind that. I don't want another series in the UAE. There's a, we've we've done we've done cricket. In the no UAE. one will be there. It's rubbish. Yeah, we, it's we, so we, bad. We, the, the golf for the England players might be great, but if from a spectator point of view, it is drab and it's boring. Um, so there we go. Um, Max, we got a couple of questions from our Patreons, which I thought we should uh, highlight. Um, mm-hmm. Your boy, Sam Curran. Yeah. Alex asks, what is his long-term England future? White ball captain. White ball, okay, well, across both, across ODI and T- T20? Um, yeah, why not? Fuck it. <laughs> uh, Dave asks, uh, how does the Guyana-Amazon Warriors spin combo of Imran Tahir and Moti hold up against other great spin combinations in various leagues and internationals? You know, it's very lucky that I read this question in the Discord earlier, because otherwise I'd just be like, "What? What the hell are you talking about?" Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what my answer to that is: uh, it wouldn't be the worst spin attack in the IPL, but that's just because RCB exists. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, when you how old is he looking... right to here now? He must be 42, like 45. 40, 40, 42, 43. I reckon. It feels like he's been forty-two for a while. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, anyway, um, and we'll uh... Max. It's been an absolute delight being back on. He's the, he's forty-five. The He's, he's 45, so he's... <laughs> hey, as we know, as we know from Jimmy Anderson, age age is no barrier. No. Um, and Max, the other part of cricket news, so Pakistan is done, McCullum is done. Um, we There needs to be an inquiry, Max. Scotland versus Australia. Oh, yes. Um, beloved friend of the podcast, Marky mm. Watt. Um, he did one of his classic 23-yarders, um, yeah. 24-yarders. Um, and Josh Inglis was, yeah, Says he wasn't ready. He was looking at Mark Watt. Mark I mean, Watt bowled it properly in his. You can see the still of the image. Like before the ball's being delivered, he is in his stance, in his yeah. ready stance to receive the ball. Yeah, this is this is where umpires need to have a bit of a backbone. That they yeah. literally they they literally get themselves all hyped up over 
the the light when they get the little light meter out and ruin everybody's test match. But when it comes to a, leg- a legitimate delivery and an Australian being out, oh no, you can have another go. Bullshit. It wasn't even close. Like it wasn't even a close game. It was dead. Yeah. Yeah, Travis had it, was... it 80 off 20. They were chasing 130. It was over. It didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, Travis, it was out. It was out. It was just out. What? I don't understand. Out. You can't just walk away from the ball if you don't like it. That's not how it works. <laughs> to be fair, when I inevitably get out for no runs on Sunday when I'm next playing, um, I'll just be like, sorry, lads, I wasn't ready. But but you you plinked it straight straight to cover. It's just like, yeah, I wasn't ready. Sorry. No, I was just swishing my bat to say that I'm yeah, not ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, it was, just so we... happened to make contact. Yeah, it's very, very strange. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Tune in next week and we'll uh, figure that one out. Um, Max, as I said, it's been an absolute pleasure to be back on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you very much for welcoming me back with open arms. Um, I don't think there's much cricket else to, to follow at the moment, is there? So, um, yeah, county championship is uh, happening. The weirdness is um, of the schedule is happening. So the T20 um, finals day happens, what, next week? Next um, weekend, yeah. So... Sussex and Surrey have booked their, booked their places. Yeah, and what's what's a shame about that is the um, England series against Australia. So it means that yeah. uh, uh, the limited overs t- um, series against Australia in, in September means that the likes of Joffrey Archer and those guys aren't going to play in finals day. Um, it's it's rubbish, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, it's rubbish. All those people have paid money to go and do that and see see that. Right. Yeah, the most a really weird situation both with 100 and the t20 blast and it's to the detriment of both competitions yeah and like you know i, I the hundreds fun right it's it's enjoyable i mean the, the cricket this year probably hasn't been as good as it has been in the last two or three but it was still a good competition finals day was uh was great it was some really really good cricket the semi-finals were fantastic like well, the eliminator whatever they were you know uh, well, the men's one in particular was was fantastic, obviously with the with the super over. But yeah, you block out the whole of August for that, and you end up, you know, England's Test series edging into September, and you know, and you know, you're not expecting it to be as horrible as it has been this year, but it it can be wet in September because it's getting towards the dregs of the summer. You get finals day in the sort of mid to late September. I mean, last year the weather was atrocious for finals day. It was people sitting around 14 degrees and rain all day um for what is a real celebration of like t20 cricket finals day is great fun like, it's it's so yeah, good domestic it's talent awesome. right as well like that like, yeah. you've got to be, you gotta be backing that don't you mm. and yeah, it is a real shame not. so, yeah, so, yeah. so uh, lord's letting us down the ecb letting us down yeah let's hope that joe root doesn't let us down max he won't he won't he possibly he couldn't possibly let us down Sri Lanka to, to win 2 1 England. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, thank so. you everybody for uh, watching and listening. Um, as with all of our shows, we are sponsored by Manscaped. Go to their website, use the code CricketPod for 20% off and free shipping. Um, and then also join our Patreon because you know, the, the Discord channel is a global enterprise which um i thoroughly thoroughly enjoy um, yeah we did our we did our nfl fantasy draft last night yeah yeah well who's uh who's looking like they've got the best team uh well according to the um predictor thing um the, mm. the best team was uh apparently alex who never played before first ever draft and um just yeah, a date according himself to, according to espn fantasy uh he's he did the best job i was uh, the second worst drafting team, apparently. Nice. Um, but that's fine. That's where I was last year, and I made it to the Super Bowl. So um, here's here's hoping that yeah, everyone, everyone loves Nunn's nonsense. Yeah, everyone loves it. And uh, welcome yeah. to Matthew Nunn, who is our latest Patreon member. So great to have you in our loving arms. Um, catch you all next week. Bye.